terakhir sampai ke sana Jawa and Tom Thomas and friends. I think uh, for close to three months, Malaysians uh, they not admit that they are they are Malaysians to go overseas because they will be the part of jokes because of NH370 especially with our great homo from Tello Intan <laughs> with his great uh, performance and I think there is no doubt that uh, never before has uh, Malaysia been in the uh, international attention for the wrong reasons this is already 101 days and as Osana has mentioned we are more nearer to where we were on the 8th of March as to what really happened on that fateful morning. Parliament, uh, this is the second week of Parliament and uh, some 30 members of Parliament had asked questions about MH370. It was actually not selected even to be answered but uh, at the last minute our Member of Parliament for Bukit Bintang Bukit Bintang's uh, question was uh, put up was brought forward so that it could be answered and uh, together with all the other 30 questions of other 30 members of Parliament so that uh, Mr. Mudin didn't have to spend any more time in Parliament on the matter by and large the answer that is given uh, to most of the MPs is that just only one paragraph. The question that we wanted to know, as you have been uh, posing, is whether there would be a report to Parliament or a paper, for instance, up to now, and like, at least what has happened, what is the progress uh, uh, update or the investigations on the disappearance of the MH370, that there's going to be a Royal Commission inquiry or an opposition headed parliamentary select committee and this is the standard answer pihak kerajaan pada masa ini belum memutuskan sama ada untuk membentangkan kertas putih di parlimen atau menubuhkan suranjaya siar satan di raja there is a Royal Commission of Inquiry ataupun menubuhkan jatah kuasa khas parlimen susulan dari insiden ini the government has not decided after 101 days have not decided still thinking about it whether to have a white paper whether to have a RCI whether to have a parliamentary side committee keputusan mengenainya akan dibuat a decision will be taken setelah pesawat yang hilang ditemui when uh, will you discover the plane if you don't discover the plane, I'm sorry, no investigation. You cannot investigate. And no decision. So they don't want to discover it. Nah, nah. So they don't discover it. Keputusan mengenai ini akan dibuat setelah pesawat yang hilang ditemui dan siasatan mengenai insiden dijalankan dan punca tragedi dikenal pasti atau all that you need. And if found then, of course, then you think about this. Lah. Usaha mencari pesawat MH370 akan diteruskan Mencari, diteruskan But then no result So this is a, a very symbolic government that we have The questions that raise uh, the issues And questions raised by Sunua, by Tommy Thomas And a long list of them These may characterize the tragedy, the disaster The tragedy and disaster of MH370 is characterized, characterized by a, a whole catalog of, uh, of uh, mistakes, of uh, confusions, of slip-ups, of flip-flops. In fact, if there's a full inquiry, I think the, all the mistakes itself, I think we'll take a full, uh, probably more than a chapter, probably a few chapters, all the mistakes that they made. And I don't think it's possible for all the questions. We must continue to raise these questions, but I don't think there can be any answers, because we really don't know, unless there's a really professional inquiry, whether there was a turn back, whether after the turn back, why you know, uh, there was no scrambling of the RMF, why uh, 
the direction that we went to, whether it be Streets of Malacca, South China Sea, Streets of Malacca, Northern Corridor, Southern Corridor, and now as uh, Tommy has mentioned, today the Imams have said, well, uh, they didn't go south enough. <laughs> this, they, they were distracted uh, by, for two months, for two months they were uh, searching, searching uh, under sea, uh, under sea and uh, 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 for the black box, because uh, the, 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 the four pigs, which finally they, just, they, they decided they didn't come from the black box. Out of the four pigs, they come from the black box. And that, that, there was a hot spot that the Imam said, analyzed, they did not go. Instead, the, it was shot off that place. But then before that, there were people who said that it probably was not in the south, probably was uh, elsewhere. So up to now, we still don't know exactly where it is. The Boeing 777. And as uh, Tommy mentioned, the, one of the, the important days was uh, March the 24th. And on March 24th, the PM announced, for whatever reason, that uh, MH370 ended its journey in the South Indian Ocean. When it ended its journey, it's very, and the MAS uh, sent out the condolence messages saying that, uh, sorry, uh, all the you know, all your loved ones have perished, and then the, the consequential actions that have been taken. And the very next day, the Prime Minister made one of his rare appearances in Parliament. So when Tommy says uh, we know a lot from PM, we don't need we don't need a missing uh, 370. We have a missing Prime Minister. <laughs> so we have a bit of a disaster, a tragedy, and uh, it's a twin disaster and tragedy of two of two missing uh, events of the 370 and the Prime Minister. But one of his rare appearances on the 25th of uh, March, he came and tabled a condolence motion. Condolence motion, very, very compassionate, very uh, heartrending, but in my in, in that, the, the motion I said, you are trying to, to find a closure. Of course, you want a closure. I'm sure even the the, the, the families of the 239 the, the passengers and crew affected, they want a closure. That was 24th. Already three weeks uh, from the 8th to the 24th is already uh, 16 days. It's already very uh, uh, heart rending. They want a closure. They're looking for a closure. But it must be a real closure. Your closure is uh, is a closure without closure. Where is the debris? And if there's no debris, where's the wreckage? Where are the signs and evidence of debris and wreckage? It was that. And I said that uh, this is unfair because you are saying that the, that the plane perished, all died. Where is the evidence? And if, if you don't have any, any evidence, it is unacceptable. Nobody can accept it. It is not a closure at all. He listened, kept quiet, and subsequently the uh, acting transport minister, the, the defense minister, Hisham Udin, argued he never said that they died. Yeah? He tried to say, he said, he never, you know, that they, he never said they perished. He only said the journey, end, the journey ended. What does it mean? Journey ended, they died. Up. Journey ended, but they died. How can it be? So it is, that's why it was anger. I understand, because I, I don't know. We feel anger, I, I'm angry. How can you make such a statement that the journey has ended, that they have all perished when there is no evidence, no, whatsoever, whether it is in the South Indian Ocean or in other areas. So that is the the treasure. So the question, as I said, at the, before we, we, the, the parliament met, that a minimum there must be a white paper. At least you want a, a progress report. If the Australian parliament, when they seek a, a, a vote for, 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 for the search uh, operations to be passed by the Australian parliament, they, they, they went to parliament to seek a vote, there, there was a debate. That could be done in the Australian parliament. Why was not? It was not done in the Malaysian parliament. There should be at least a progress report, at least after some uh, three months, when uh, we were meeting, a parliament was reconvening on the 9th of, uh, of uh, June, and then there must be a full debate as to whether there should be a Royal Commission inquiry or a parliamentary uh, select committee. And I still think there should be a parliamentary select committee because all these questions that were raised, they cannot be answered. Even if there's a parliamentary select committee, we, cannot, we may not be able to find answers to all the questions, but we may be able to get some answers. 
some answers to ever there was a turn back and why if there was a turn back they came up with all these uh, uh, pretensions uh, misleading neighboring countries to search the so, so Chinese Sea. That's one aspect. Secondly, was what happened during the first few hours, and those are the most crucial, critical first few hours. When was scrambling, and who was responsible for the for the failure of scrambling? Is it because that uh, they were uh, having a, a, having a nap? If that is the case, then you know, in the Auditor General's report, we have very expensive alarm clocks. They should be sent to the, all these uh, uh, radar operators so that uh, they cannot they cannot be sleeping away. And Heads must roll. If uh, the people who are negligent, who are who have failed in their duties, heads must roll. There must be accountability. And as in the the, the as in our operation, the search and the rescue operation, as uh, Junho mentioned, four and a half hours. Why four and a half hours? Why it took so long? And when? And that, and that is a question I've been asking. When was the first time that the prime minister was informed? Was first notified? When was the first time that the Hishamadi, as the acting transport minister, was first notified? Because it's important. Because in the entire uh, 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 operating procedure, once there is an emergency of that nature, the PM should be informed. When? We don't know. We, 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 we can only guess from uh, what was told by FLOM. You know what FLOM? The first lady of Malaysia. <laughs> there was a story she said that you know, that morning, no. Wow, she was supposed to go for some function. And she, and she was late, it was supposed to be 8 o'clock. She went there, nice something, very late. Why? She said she tried to contact the, the Prime Minister. Because uh, she was contacted about this uh, missing plane, must inform the Prime Minister and couldn't contact the Prime Minister. Even she had difficulty getting, the, getting through to the Prime Minister. And from all accounts, unless uh, from was not telling the truth, it was for 9.30 or something that the Prime Minister was informed. How can? How, how can that be? Something is wrong with the whole system. And when we are about it, maybe very much later. So these are things which if there is a parliamentary select committee headed by, if the parliamentary select committee headed by, P, by BN, they will never ask us, allow us questions to be asked. They say it must be headed by PR, by Pakhtar Akhet. So these questions, there will be uh, no impediments to a full inquiry and the question exactly a whole series of them and I think this is important because uh, there is no doubt that uh, Malaysia's uh, reputation has seriously suffered if just only today there was this uh, there's been uh, analysts write, uh, write ups reports uh, uh, analysis about uh, what happened and it's because of the Inability to find wreckage exactly where is the plane he has to give rise to thousand and one conspiracy theories. Of course, not thousand and one, at least uh, more than a thousand conspiracy theories. Uh, whether there was a mechanical failure, whether there was a uh, hijacking, whether there was uh, uh, even uh, 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 remote control uh, takeover, CIA involvement, even our beloved former Prime Minister uh, Tun Dr. Mahate also was quite to accept some of these conspiracy theories. And uh, I was just reading today that it was abused by Christ Goodfellow, who in the early days of the MH370 disaster had given his own theory. Then, the, of course, he was a former pilot, and he didn't think that there was anything. Uh, uh, wrong with the pilots, and I think that it was probably a mechanical uh, uh, problem, a failure. But one thing is, is this paragraph here he said, only one thing is certain, Malaysia has lost all credibility <laughs> in regard to the MH370 investigation and should yield control to a competent and impartial authority. Of course, I'm not saying that uh, I would agree that that and when they say that uh, that is why I believe matters should be turned over to Britain's Air Excellence Investigation Branch because they felt that they were more impartial and more independent. But the whole question, there is no doubt. The question of uh, accountability, the question of uh, crisis management needs very much to be desired. And this goes back to the whole question of our system of governance. I think the, the details uh, 
to why and the Tommy has heard that, has dealt with the rather macro issue of our system of governance. What we want is not is minimum government, maximum governance. Minimum governance, maximum government. Yeah? What we have, what Majid is doing is maximum government, minimum governance. What we should have is maximum governance, minimum government. This must be accountability, there's no accountability. What is the role of uh, the RMRA people, the DCA people, the uh, MS people, the Prime Minister, the Defense uh, Minister, the Acting the Transport Minister, their role uh, and, and the responsibilities up to now, we are still at a loss. Just the last few days, we can see how ridiculous our system of uh, governance is. We have so many laws, but never has Malaysia been so lawless. <laughs> we have so many laws, but never has Malaysia been so lawless. We have the IGP, number one, the guardian of law, but he's a big law. We have now, uh, only yesterday, uh, uh, the minister in the Prime Minister's department in charge of uh, Islamic affairs. Usurping the powers of the Prime Minister and the powers of the Minister of Law and Constitution, talking about whether Malaysia is a secular state or not a secular state. There is no province, no business of a Minister of Islamic Affairs to talk about in Parliament. It should be the Prime Minister. If not the Prime Minister, it should be the Minister for Law and Constitution. And who is the Minister for Law and Constitution? Nancy. Before that, Nazri. What has happened? So this whole system has uh, broken down. Judiciary, governance, on the, the MH370 has become uh, a, a subject, a, an issue where Malaysians uh, couldn't hold our heads high. And I think it's important for the civil society. I think uh, it's already 101 days. In order to come forward to demand accountability, um, to demand, uh, 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 you know, of course, uh, since we couldn't happen, we unable to find the, the, the missing 370, have all the answers, but at least some of the answers we should be able to establish. And we must make uh, it very clear that we can accept the position that has been taken by the government that until the rate that the plane is found, there will be no. Uh, investigation of any nature, and uh, I think this uh, this forum in particular is in order to try to trigger a greater public awareness of this issue, to send a message to the Prime Minister and to the government that we expect greater accountability and a better system of governance. Thank you very much. like to now open to the floor for any questions. Uh, may I ask that if you have any questions, please introduce yourself first and then you can direct your questions to any member of our panel. Better still you have insects that we share. So we are in the year of industry. Any insects that we Uh, I'm reporter from Guangdong Dailies. I've been followed this uh, incident for the long of uh, three months ago. Uh, actually, so I want to ask the first question is, um, what's the purpose that you guys do this, organize these seminars for the forum for? Because I think this is because the case haven't closed yet. Until now, we haven't known where is the plane is right. And then, um, I think, uh, are you guys the experts to explain the things, uh, where the plane is? If yes, um, can, you, uh, can you go to the uh, right authorities to uh, say about this? And then, um, do you think this forum that will bring another hurt for the families? Yes, all. Thank you.
Well, I think the, to answer your question, we must look at what has not been told to us by the Malaysian government. Um, they've omitted to tell us so many material things, so there's massive omissions, and when they release information, as I said, on a piecemeal, um, piecemeal fashion, uh, from time to time, uh, it's often inaccurate. So you asked about the families. I mean, I don't know whether there are any families here, but surely one can assume that the families would want to know the truth. So I, I, I started my contribution by saying that the, one of the functions of this uh, forum, as I see it, is to try and f I, uh, find out what actually happened. But we all are suffering from a handicap, a massive handicap, uh, because we just don't know the facts. So we have as much a, a right to express our opinion as, as the government, because they have not been frank. And, and I think the best example of that was when the, when the transport minister was interviewed in the Four Corners program in Australia. You should watch it on the net. Uh, and to so many of her questions, to the lady in uh, uh, the uh, US questions, he kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. And that was really terrible. If you are the Minister of Transport and two and a half months after the accident, you still don't know uh, the facts, then it's terrible you've got mastered the brief. So we are trying to fill up that gap, that is a gap of information and we are doing our teeny mini bit uh, by, by trying to understand the facts. Yes, uh, the objective of this event was uh, answered by Mr. Tommy Thomas and uh, about the members of family. Actually, we I had contacted the, one of the members of family to uh, their, their social media and they didn't oppose this uh, event. They didn't say that uh, we shouldn't organize this event. Thanks. In fact, I believe the families would like answers uh, to question to, to the questions where they are available. Of course, it's not possible to find exactly what happened because you will know until the, the plane is found. But as from the last 100 days, what happened, how the government has conducted itself, whether in a competent, efficient manner, or whether it has failed, I'm sure it will, be, it will uh, contribute uh, to the lessening of the grief of the affected, uh, the next of kin, if they can be answers, but for instance, whether there was a turn back, whether why there was no scrambling, why uh, uh, the search in the South China Sea, and then the Straits of America, and the Andaman Sea, and then the Bay of Bengal, and the Northern and Southern Corridor, because they will want to know the truth. So it is, it, it is in order to assuage also their concern. I may be wrong, but I believe if the fam affected families are asked whether they want even these uh, uh, answers to be found, although the final issues are still to be determined because the final issues will not be able to ascertain until uh, it is found, until the plane is found, which can be one year. This can be a hope, if, of course, if you are fortunate, if you, if, and one month, two months, or one year, two years, I mean, the whole thing cannot be held in suspense. So I think this is in order to have a greater, to help, impossible to have a full closure, but it, towards a closure. And I think uh, a responsible government will not delay a full, uh, as much as an inquiry into areas where it is possible answers to be given. This question is for YB Kitiang. Uh, YB, just um, let's just say that um, you were the transport minister. What would you have been? What would you have done differently? And also, I think one of the uh, critical points in the search and rescue was the, there was an article saying that uh, probably Malaysia should have given the search and rescue efforts to a country that had experienced. Uh, such a tragedy or similar tragedies like America, would you have given the 
such as rescue efforts to be handled by America or different countries, or you still think that Malaysia should have handled the search and rescue efforts? Well, I'm not a transport minister, but I can say that uh, any efficient and competent transport minister who is, uh, uh, will ensure that there will be a full transparency and uh, accountability as to the whole operation. And uh, if the Malaysian uh, uh, civil servants are incapable of uh, conducting a competent uh, uh, full rescue operation as well as uh, a uh, full operation. Then, of course, you must think in terms of an uh, international, uh, international operation. But if you are, if you have Malaysians who can do so, then I think we should have full confidence in our own uh, Malaysians. So it's a question of uh, uh, of uh, where we are today. Thank
until the stage they satisfy. So, but they also can uh, call off the uh, search function also. The, if they are satisfied that they can't file it uh, anyway or eventually, they, they can do it. Yeah, thanks. I think the proposal of six months is uh, reasonable, but whether it should be six months or not is something that can be further pursued. I think between the families, the representatives, and the government of the day, well, I think uh, I think it's understandable. There should be some form, not not be a closure, in some form of uh, in order to, to so they can start leading their lives. Maybe there's something they should uh, 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 organize themselves, get a lawyer, and I'm sure Tommy Thomas is uh, prepared to help uh, on the matter. Uh, but as for the question about uh, those who are responsible, I agree, in principle, that it must rule for those, whether in civil or military uh, 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 services, for any negligence, of duty, negligence and direction of duty. But there must be a, 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 a fair uh, a process, a due process, they have to do an inquiry. We cannot just, uh, not uh, uh, talk case and all that. That's why we want to have a full inquiry and uh, one way where we have a parliamentary select committee and all those who have a chance to defend themselves. As for uh, pushing everything to members of parliament, you say that they are responsible to make it ensure to ensure that the laws are just and they are justly implemented. Well, I don't think it is uh, 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 that is uh, uh, a fair picture. It's not the Parliament uh, and MPs themselves uh, cannot uh, themselves ensure all that. Only if we have a new government, that is, you have a change in Putrajaya. Right Only if I can. Can I just answer your question? Uh, well, in the typical Malaysian fashion, uh, you know, there's, there's no investigation, there's no due process, there's no uh, finding out of facts to, to punish any need to punish the wrongdoers. Instead of what happens is you get promoted. Uh, so I, I was told that the army chief got an extended contract. Work. One of the army chiefs, isn't it? One of their contracts was extended. They got a two-year extension. Uh, I vaguely remember re reading that. Um, so, but anyway, what Kitsian said is correct. You must investigate uh, and then find out the facts. And then if people were sleeping, they must be sacked. But that's exactly what they don't, what our government doesn't want to happen. Our government always covers up things. It's always covering up. That's been a track record, and there's no reason why they would depart. But the uh, the very important fact here is to find out when Hishamuddin knew, as Kitsian said, because uh, uh, Hishamuddin was both transport minister, so in charge of mass, and uh, a defense minister. Uh, and therefore, Air Force and all comes under him. So by sheer coincidence, he was having the two relevant ministries uh, in, uh, in, uh, under him. The two portfolios were under him. So it is very important to find out when he was told, because we now know uh, on the assumption that the turn back took place, that the military and the civilian radars discovered it, each was telling the other, they were watching it friendly, didn't do anything. Now this must be happening at about 1.32, 2.33. Did any of them have the common sense to tell, say, look, somebody should have said, look, you know, this is something very unusual. Should we not tell our minister? Because if they did not have that common sense, in a sense, it's not Hishamudin's fault. Because he, as is entitled to, like all of us, he's entitled to a good night's sleep. So he is sleeping uh, on Saturday night at 3 o'clock, 3.34, like the rest of us. The burden is on the people on the ground, civilians and um, uh, military, when they are seeing something except, exceptional, probably first time in their life, to say, hey, warning bells, we better tell the minister. So if they had actually telephoned the minister at 3 o'clock, we don't know. And if he said, go by and disturb me and go back to sleep, uh, that's negligence. We don't know, we just don't know. Yeah. But, but if he had known about it and didn't do anything, he's personally accountable. But if he did not know about it, and if he only knew about it at about 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, there's very little he can do. Because the plane has already gone, where's our Air Force? Our Air Force can scramble. That's the point. So timing matters. Five 
kilometer deep down. The current is so strong, right? Something will sweep the plane and something will come up floating. Am I right? Or not? I just want your opinion. I don't know enough of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can try to answer that. <laughs> Yeah, there are several um, scenarios that, uh, to answer your questions. Uh, if it lands softly, then it will manage to uh, maintain its uh, the airframe and the body. Then it won't crash badly. But uh, if it landed uh, badly uh, instantly, then it will uh, decompose uh, immediately. Let's say it landed gently. Yeah. Five kilometers. But the current undercurrent is so strong, it will hit and something will come off of the plane. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. I think the plane, what I look at is the plane is not in the ocean. Yeah, that is what I raised in my the, the first few lines that uh, we have to determine where was the airplane. Because uh, we, if we don't know the last location of the airplane, we can't find the debris, the wreckage. It's very hard for us. The Indian Ocean is so big, so vast, so wide. So, um, according to my knowledge, they just have searched about 60,000 kilometers square, uh, 60,000 uh, 60, square kilometers only. So, but however, the Indian Ocean itself is more than 10 million uh, square kilometers. So, with, without identifying the, the last known location, it's very hard for you. Because the DB, the DB is my floating at somewhere else, just in, in the in the ocean that we just don't know only. But uh, I just want to add something about uh, the objective of holding uh help of holding this event and forum because um, I believe that only through identifying the root causes and the problems of the whole scenario, then we can improve ourselves. Not only ourselves, improve the authority performance also. Without holding much more this kind of forum, I think the people don't even know how to ask the questions of authority. This forum is aimed at uh, to equip you with the related uh, knowledge. Thanks. Yeah, just before that, maybe uh, just arising from there on the question of the vastness and uh, how. Uh, humongous is the uh, Indian Ocean. We don't about, talk about the ocean, we talk about the northern and the southern corridor is enough. Because the, according to this is uh, some useful information, the, the transport minister had mentioned at that time that uh, the MH370 search area covered 2.24 million square nautical miles. 2.24 million uh, square nautical miles. Large enough to contain almost 2 billion Boeing 777s. Not million, billion, B-I-L-L-I-O-N-G. You can have the 2 billion Boeing 777s encompassing about 1.5% of the world. So there's uh, an idea of the vastness of the world, just only the northern and southern corridor. Good evening, uh, I'm Su Lin, reporter from Millennial Online. Uh, my question is for Mr. Tommy Thomas. Um, do you think that the search coordinators should not solely rely on, on data from Inverset? Because so far, that's basically the only piece of data they're relying on. So do you think we should question that and the searches should not just rely on Inverset? Well, I think now it's too late. I mean, it's, you know, 100 days is just too late. I mean, I, I, for, I go back to where I always say the, the critical things, the critical facts were the first four hours. And once we miss that little window, say up to three o'clock, four o'clock, then it is just impossible. So in many ways, looking at four o'clock, five o'clock on Saturday morning and today, 100 days later and two years forward is about the same. You are looking not for a needle in a haystack, you're looking for a haystack. Or, you know, so it is just impossible to, to discover. And whether Imaza is right or not, I think that is so technical. Um, and that's where I would be critical of the Prime Minister. In, a, in many ways, the Prime Minister is like all of us in the room. We are lay persons insofar as the Imaza 
technical advice is going to be because it is very high powered science and scientific stuff and sound audio which probably nobody in Malaysia understands or Malaysia's cleverest physicist in our university if there is such a person. So it is lay people like us listening to these experts and then making a judgment call. Very dangerous. Dangerous to do. And just when they ask the, the, not, the human reaction should be, no, can we wait please? Can we listen to other people? Why am I listening to only you? Can I get 25 other experts? There was no need to rush and choose in Mazat. And of course, as I said, they benefited. They got free publicity. The amount of money spent on searching, who is going to pay? <laughs> yeah, it, it will be paid by um, our Malaysian government and taxpayer. Uh, answering that the questions about the IMASA, should we rely only on IMASA? Like what I have, what I, uh, I have shown you just now. Indonesian air defense radar didn't detect an H370. Did they uh, put into account this uh, technical data also? If they really have checked their raw data, Indonesian air defense radar also, I think they might can uh, eliminate the possibility that MH370 flew to south of Indonesia. But, but can I just ask, can we trust the Indonesian data? <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, they have to form up uh, what international technical team to uh, evaluate. Yeah, not only Indonesia, including Indian also. Uh, I am from Free Malaysia today. Uh, I want to ask is that uh, Hisham Budin proudly said that the first phase uh, is 27.6 million spent only and it's the lowest. What is your comments regarding this, uh, his statement? <laughs> well, finally, that's only three phase. Uh, first phase, la. we're now in the third phase already. Yeah. And uh, he says that the, that the other countries will bear their, their separate costs. Whether they will or not is to be seen. Whether there will be a political will to continue to spend money uh, is a big question mark because finally there's a, uh, you don't have the political will and everybody is not prepared to chip in. Then the, when where do we stand? It's in Malaysia that uh, we have to bear the, the brunt of it. And uh, I think that is a, uh, there's a big question mark. Nah? Why we put ourselves in that position of uh, a, a bottomless uh, pit of expenditure? Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, here I'm going to ask the question. Uh, my name is Arasu. Okay. My question is, uh, number one is to Mr. Lam. Huh? Would you mind uh, showing the slide on the Air France rescue effort? Because you did mention something about uh, MAS there, you know? Not here, not here. Okay, okay. Um, not this, I think the next one. No, no. Right. Uh, you see, here you mentioned about uh, responsibility taken by Brazilian air traffic control as well as Dhaka ATC. But for the MAS case, you mentioned about Malaysia Airlines. I wonder why in this case you are talking about ATC, but for NH370 you pinpointing it to Malaysia Airlines. I just wonder why. There's a difference, you know. Here it's a control authority, air traffic control, you mentioned. But in another slide, you did mention that MAS was slow. I just want to know, why are you talking about an airline that is slow, whereas in this case you talk about air traffic control taking charge? That's my first question. Right? Next one. Huh? I want everyone here to understand 
Aviation industry is a very highly regulated industry. Every aspect of its operation is documented. I am just going to touch on cargo operations. Huh? Cargo operations. When an aircraft, before it takes off to another country, every content of it is not only known to the departure from at the departure point, but the receiving side also will know. So, for us to continue believing that there was um, uh, 2,900 kilos of unidentified cargo, we cannot accept it. All I'm trying to say is, especially members of the public and in particular media, please do your research to find out how airline industry functions. It's highly regulated. There is no way we can have cargo that is not identified. Because if such a thing happens, you know what is the implication? An airline flies over so many countries. You think those countries will allow an airline to fly with unidentified cargo? It won't. So there is no way we should accept unidentified cargo 2,900 kgs. And please, again, don't fault the airline. In a situation like this, the airline has a responsibility to forward all information to the head of the investigation. And who is the head of the investigation in this case? Mr. Lam, you can tell me. You mean the international territory? No, no, no. I'm talking about this case. Who is the head of investigation? It is not the airline, but who? DCA. Yes. yes. It's the government authority. Don't, don't say DCA. It's the government authority. The airline has a responsibility to share all information with the investigating authority. Okay, that's point number one. Number two, whoever seeks information, don't knock the doors of the airline. Because the airline is only responsible to the family members of those who are missing. The next of kin. So if we don't understand this rule clearly, we are knocking the doors of the airline and putting a lot of pressure on them Whereas the investigating authority, which has all the information, is sitting back, enjoying the fun. That shouldn't be the case. Shouldn't be the case. All information about cargo, I'm just giving a suggestion huh, to everyone who seems to have international contacts. Why don't you all ask Beijing, hey, don't you know what the contents were? I'll tell you why. Before a flight leaves here to US, the US already knows who are the passengers, who, what is in the cargo. I'm sure you know Mr. Lam. And why are we still looking for answers? What about the unidentified cargo? We should be able to get the answer. And we should pressure the government. Now, incidentally, do you all remember, after the NH370, who went to China? Even when the Sultan died, came back and then fly back again, you know? What actually happened? Was it just for pandas? We should actually ask all these questions, you know? Now, I'm just going one more step further. Whenever China says something, that they have detected something. The other axis, Australia, UK and US, they are very quick to say, hey, no, do you all realize this or not? China is on the other side trying to find out and here on the other side, these English-speaking nations are saying, no, you are wrong. Something is terribly wrong here. And I feel that it has got to do with the consignment of cargo, which is still not identified. So let's put our hearts and minds together to find out what exactly is going on here. 
Too tiny in a highly regulated environment. We still don't know what the cargo is, or we still can't force the information out of the investigating authority. But Mr. Arun, that is that is part of the things that's deleted. No, 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 no. It cannot be deleted. Beijing cannot delete it, sir. You can delete it in your system here in Malaysia. Try that with US. You can delete it here, but the US fellows will have it. It's part of the Malaysian deleted document. Yes, Malaysia can delete it and say, I don't know. But what about the receiving end? This is very, very important, you know. We, we seem to be just exploring within Malaysia, but we are not contacting the authorities the other side because they are very equally frustrated. But they should be able to tell also. But you need to go through the proper channels to find out. Okay, I'm giving all this information, ladies and gentlemen. I was in Malaysia Alliance for 34 years. I was dealing with crisis and management. And BBC contacted me at around 8 o'clock in the morning on the 8th to ask me for my views. And I told them, sorry guys, I'm no more there. But actually they wanted my own opinion about it. The only thing I did was, I told Barnama subsequently because Barnama was asking me why is it it's so difficult to get information from Malaysia Airlines. I said, sorry, they don't owe you any information. They have to give the information to the family members. You contact the investigating authority. I had to tell them that. Okay? So, uh, you have some ideas how we can proceed on the cargo matter? Because that is a missing link here. You can talk about everything, flight plans, blah, blah, blah. Cargo, still not resolved yet. That could be the missing link, my opinion. Any other questions from the floor? May I? Uh, the gentleman here asks a question first. Yeah. I'll come back to you. Alright, my name is Tarmi Zianwa. Sorry, uh, I just want to ask you one, one question. Uh, do you think this uh, accident had impact our domestic political conditions? Because we can see the current government act like the gas, uh, act like the savior for our country for this case. Uh, but uh, such as their efforts uh, advertised, uh, advertised at the radio and also the, uh, the television. Uh, but on the other hand, we know that the government are very weak, but the information is not uh, go, to the, go to the society. So what is uh, your opinion about this? Take a survey uh, done some time ago, which said that only 24 or 26 percent of those surveys, when they sample, uh, trusted or was satisfied with the government's explanation. So I think you're right. In the early days, I think certainly the first one week um, after a tragedy, it is very difficult for anybody to criticize the government of the day. The government of the day as incumbents in any country benefits from crises and emergencies because they are in power. So that was the first one week, you're right. But after some time, Malaysians also have some high standards and with Twitter and Facebook and everybody knows what's happening. They also, they also become critical and say, are you kidding? Which explains why the survey was done maybe two months later. I'm sure that if you did a survey today, 100 days later, I wonder uh, how many percent would say they are doing a good job. It's only below 24 percent. Would you like to ask a question? My question is, in the first place, was there a crash or not? <laughs> if you ask me, technically, common sense, uh, logic of deduction, 
In the scientific sense of Occam's principle, the simplest form explanation to me, there was no question. So what happened to the 280 people? <laughs> 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 that is James Bond's uh, responsibility. <laughs> One of them is your friend, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Your friend has disappeared, I assume. Uh, why do we need the proof? It's not just closure for the families. We need the proof because we assume that these 239 people are, are no longer around. We need to know the truth in order that civil aviation can learn from it and that it will never happen again. So that these memories of these 239 can be remembered in future. Maybe we have a protocol, an MH370 protocol on civil aviation safety in future. And that's why the truth is very, very necessary. Then there's some benefit, something positive out of it. And that we rely on the civil society to keep pushing for that truth. Otherwise, it will be forgotten. And it's already beginning to be forgotten. So please keep that in my own mind. Thank you. That is a good note to end on. We are looking for the truth and we hope that even though we did not find many answers tonight, but we can avoid um, any similar incidents from happening again. Um, once again, I would like to thank our panelists for being here tonight. Uh, please join me in thanking Mr. Lin Mr. Tommy Thomas and Mr.